A magic experience like nothing you've ever seen. Witness for the first time, the amazing David. Welcome one, welcome all. It is I, the amazing David. And tonight, during this live worldwide broadcast, I will wow you with the greatest escape ever witnessed. While hanging upside down above a pit of crocodiles, I will attempt to free myself from this straight jacket. After only 15 seconds, if I haven't escaped, I will be dropped into the pit. A word of caution to the children who are watching. Do not, I repeat, do not try this at home. I'm a trained professional. All right, producer Jordan, start the clock. David. David, what are you doing here? I saw you on TV last night. I thought you were a goner. Well, Britain, the good news is that I eventually escaped from the straitjacket. The bad news is that it's because the crocodiles ate it off of me. Well, I'm just glad you're okay. But you look terrible. Did you just get out of the hospital? The hospital? No, I, I can't afford that. Corporate cut our insurance. They did? Why? <sighs> Last year, I accidentally drew on the Mona Lisa and we had to pay France a million dollars. Ever since then, the company has been looking for ways to save money. Oh, you're kidding me. <gasps> I have an idea. Come on, David. I know a place where you can get some help. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I'd say about two weeks later, eh? Wow, I feel as good as new. Thanks, Britain. You're welcome. Oh, no, not you. I mean the country. You see, in 1931, the Commonwealth of Britain expanded to include- Never mind, David. I'm just glad you're better. Thanks, Britain. I mean you this time. Oh, okay, then you're welcome. That was a really close call, though. Being an escape artist is dangerous work. Oh, yeah, for sure. In fact, no one knows that better than the guy in today's Bible story. There's an escape artist in the Bible? Uh, was he in a straitjacket? No, he was in a basket. A basket? That's not even hard to get out of. Well, he wasn't trying to get out of it. He was using it to escape from the people who were trying to kill him. And no, they weren't crocodiles. That's not what I was going to ask. Okay. What were you going to ask? Um, were they alligators? No, they were humans. You know what? It's probably easiest if we just read the story in the Bible for ourselves. So let's do this. In just a second, press pause on the video and read the verses on the screen. When you're finished, press play and we'll see you back here. that amazing? Saul, who later changed his name to Paul, kept on telling everyone that Jesus was the Son of God, even though people were trying to kill him for what he was saying. That is amazing, but in a way, it sort of makes sense. How so? I mean, have you ever gotten news that was so good you had to tell people about it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, that's what happened to Saul when he heard the good news about Jesus. And that news is way better because it has the power to change people's lives. You are right. 
the good news of Jesus changed Saul's life, it changed my life, and it's changed a lot of your lives too. Yeah, and more than that, Believing the good news of Jesus is how we get to live with God forever in heaven. That's why God wants us to share the good news with everyone. You know what, though? Sometimes telling others about Jesus can feel kind of scary. But it must have been even scarier for Paul because it could have gotten him killed. So where do you think Paul got the courage and power to tell others about Jesus? Well, I think I know exactly where he got it from. It was the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, the, the Holy Spirit. That, that's the part of God who helps comfort and guide the people who follow Jesus. Right, it was the Holy Spirit who gave Saul the courage and power to spread the news about Jesus. Yeah, uh, but that's not all. The Holy Spirit gives all believers the courage and power to share the good news of Jesus. He does, in fact, that's what today's Bible verse tells us. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me from one end of the earth to the other. Acts 1, 8. After Jesus rose from the dead and went up into heaven, God sent his Holy Spirit to help us. So when we tell others about Jesus, we're never alone. The Holy Spirit is always with us. That's so cool. Can you imagine what it might look like if we shared the good news of Jesus like Paul did? Actually, I have a challenge that might help us imagine that exact thing. Awesome, what is it? Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I have this set of dominoes that we're going to set up, but we have to do it in a particular way. Instead of lining them up one at a time, we're gonna fan them out like a pyramid. So we'll start with one, but then the next row will have two, then three, and so on until they're all gone. Okay, but what happens if they fall down? Well, we'll have to be really careful, and hopefully that won't happen until we're finished. All right, well, let's give it a try. In three, three two, two, one, go! go. That was close. Okay, one last domino. Okay, we did it. Okay, now, don't move or even breathe too hard. Okay, but what does this have to do with anything? Well, think of it like this. Imagine these dominoes are people. Saul was just one guy, kind of like this first domino. But then the Holy Spirit gave him the power to tell people about Jesus. Then those people told more people, who told more people, and on and on and on, until there were tons of people who loved and followed Jesus. You see, the good news of Jesus spreads kind of like this. It so was. Oh, look at some of them didn't fall down though. It's it's kind of like these two guys didn't share Jesus with the people behind them, and so they never heard. Yeah, but look at how many fell. And what's really cool is that it works the same for us. 
When we tell people about Jesus, they can share the good news with the people they know, who share it with more people, who share it with more people. Yeah, and before you know it, the number of believers grows more and more. You know, that makes me think of a question. Who could you tell about Jesus? And what would you say? Press pause. And discuss. Sometimes telling people about Jesus can be kind of hard. But remember, you're not alone. God is with you. That's right. And in the same way the Holy Spirit helped Paul share the gospel, he helps us too. Yeah. With the help of God's Spirit, each one of us has the power to share the good news of Jesus and to change the world. So let's do it. Maybe you could start with the person that you just talked about. Tell them the things that you learn at church. Right. Then maybe you could even invite them to church with you. Or you could even watch the Journey Today show with them. No matter how you do it, just remember that God is with you. For sure. And remember that if you're going to perform a great escape above a crocodile pit, make sure your parents have good insurance. David, no, no. Do not do that stunt no matter what insurance your parents have. Does that go for the kids in Canada? Yes, that goes for kids everywhere. <sighs> Fine. Don't do it, kids. We'll see you next week. Yeah, bye everybody. We can't wait to see you. Yeah, bye. My next stunt is called Small Saw. For this stunt, I will cram myself into this tiny basket. Once inside, I will be lowered into a pit of angry crocodile. No, you won't. What? Ow! Oh.